Hi, so I have that video about how UE4's geo tools have sucked and been worse than Quake ones, and that's been kind of popular. But uh, today they released in a uh, dev branch in GitHub some new geo tools, and I've just opened them for the first time. I'm going to see what is up with this. So you can get these off uh, GitHub. I think the branch name is pretty self-explanatory. If I drag this thing out, I have a new tab, Mesh Editor, Vertices, Edges, Polygons, Any. It's got sound effects, which seems egregious, but whatever. Okay, it, it kind of snaps to uh, to the grid, but it lurps there. It doesn't just snap in one frame, so that's interesting. Okay, so this is triangulated, which is not useful for level design, usually. That's cool, though. All right, so there is a quadrangulate button here. Um, okay. I can change spaces. Can control click to select multiple faces. Quadrangulate mesh does indeed quadrangulate me. All right. My um, hesitation over things like this is uh, is always that they maybe end up making a good modeling tool that's still not a good level design tool. Okay, I just hit extrude. Oh, and I drag, and I'm extruding. Hooray! Okay. And what if I Okay, it, this extrude is a mode, it's not an action, so I guess I have to get out of that. And then I can probably scale this in. Hmm, the, um, the widget doesn't always drag the expected axis, but it's okay. And of course there might be hotkeys for this thing that I don't know about yet. It would be good to have one for extrude, for instance. And it would be good to have um, the ability to switch between modes with a hotkey. I'm not sure if I can. Doesn't look like it. But again, if you can, I just don't have the hotkey. Let's see. Let's extrude again. The extrude tool, I'm, I'm starting to like this thing. Let's see. I can just extrude again. The only thing is it's like, it's an extra click compared to what I'm used to from like Maya or something. Um, between extruding and scaling that uh, that extruded face and then scaling again. Okay, so I scaled the face and I accidentally like dragged it over here. I've, that's like the second time that I've thought I was just scaling something but I actually was moving it. The thing that I like about this already is it's got select modes for vertices, edges, polygons and any. I would usually probably only ever use any. I actually find it quite quite dumb when there isn't an any mode. Okay. I'm gonna reduce the grid size a bit. This is like very hard to see with unlit view and this grid is really obnoxious when you have it lit. Seems to contribute to the bloom. But that's fine. Tessellate selected polygons. That's cool. Uh, so there's also like, there's a mode up here for per instance versus propagate. Propagate being, uh, it'll propagate to the static mesh asset itself. So uh, I guess this wall is, you know, these are, this is the same static mesh asset a few times. So if I switch to propagate, check it. Some of these tools don't seem to be quite behaving every single time I use them, but I mean this is already like for a cave or something, for any kind of any kind of terrain that isn't a massive landscape, which is where uh, the landscape system falls down. This could be really cool, and uh, kind of over the top as it is, I do like these visual effects and sounds. Can I marquee select? I can. Oh, okay brings up a little pop-up, but they're all grayed out. Hmm. Unless I do it from inside here? Marquee select polygons. Okay, so it needs a little bit of work, but marquee selection is is the shit. What if I tessellate these? I'll 
I'll try. I'll quadrangulate him first. That worked on some of them. I guess any way that makes sense. But it lost me my selection, so. Marky select polygons. Tessellate, tessellate, tessellate. I have. Well, I could just drag my cursor around on this all day. Um, let's bevel something. Can I double click to select a whole edge loop? I'm not sure if I did or not because the grid is... Yeah, you can't double click an edge to select the edge loop, I guess. Or maybe you can and it just isn't working on this one. Let's select some edges. Uh, sure, why not? I'll just grab these ones. Uh, what? When I can and cannot marquee select and grab a thing is uh, not clear at the moment. And I've got a crash. That's okay. And we're back. Um, I've lost all my changes, but that's to be expected. All right, so we'll see if this behaves itself a little better this time. I'll quadrangulate this, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it on propagate mode, just so that all these walls uh, have the changes of whatever I do. Uh, so yeah, it's um, it's a little bit glitchy in how much I um, how much it gets dragged out when I do this. I'm having to kind of drag my mouse across the entire screen just to get a tiny bit of um, distance here. I guess I've actually made a bunch of faces. Let's go back to this. I'm accidentally moving the entire face when I meant to just scale it. And uh, I'm dragging on the y-axis, but it's uh, taking effect on a different axis. Uh, finally got the axis I wanted. I can definitely see that noise getting annoying. Widget placement is probably still going to be annoying to me, but it seems to be mostly getting the middle of the face right now, so that's good. So what about... Alt drag, does that do anything? Alt drag is clone in uh, in Unreal, so I would hope that it would extrude or something like that, but it doesn't. So I guess anytime I want an entire new mesh, I just have to clone. Oop, hang on. Alright, clone drag doesn't actually work on one of these meshes at all. Bevel polygon mode. You click on a polygon and you drag the mouse a bit and. Kind of eyeball it, I guess. But I'm getting quite inconsistent results, and I don't know how I would bevel on a different axis. Okay, so I guess I'll just drag another cube in and edit that if I want a wall. I could just obviously uh, work off of that mesh and extrude out of it for the walls, but that isn't what I want. That's not how I want to work. Let's see. The grid snapping that lurps to the location instead of just snapping in one frame is really good. Um, can I snap to a vertice of another mesh? I kind of doubt it. Hmm. Again, I want to. Um, I want to just shift drag this entire wall across so that I have two walls. Um, but I guess I can't yet because doing that just results in a big nothing. Hmm, is there a cut tool? I can flip a polygon. I can insert like that. It's kind of good. It certainly doesn't seem to be at Quake's level of ease of dragging out an environment yet. But, you know, in fairness. It is super early. It seems like it needs some work to become a level design tool rather than a modeling tool, um, if that's what they want it to be. Scaling never seems to be on the correct axis. It's easy to accidentally miss these tiny little widget things you got to click on. One thing that doesn't seem to work at all so far is uh, cloning or creating a new mesh in a non-stupid way. Like I can drag another cube out if I leave 
geometry mode entirely and start editing that, but I can't like create a mesh here and then clone it. I guess I can insert an edge loop. That's a little weird. So my fear whenever somebody does a tool like this is that they're going to misunderstand the level design tool problem as they're not being robust enough 3D modeling tools in the editor, but it's not that because a level design tool and a 3D modeling tool are not the same thing. You can make a really good modeling tool, like imagine if Maya was good, and it still won't be a good level design tool. This is where you need someone like Robin Yarn Storm, or I guess me, to come along and tell you what makes a good level design tool. I have another video all about that. I wouldn't necessarily recommend checking this out now, it's kind of a pain to pull it down from GitHub and get it running, and it's pretty glitchy right now, but it's pretty promising. I think it's gonna be great, but I hope that they uh, listen to feedback from you know, people who used to use BSP back in the day. Not Unreal BSP, but actually, you know, Hammer and Quake and things like that. Make the tools a little more intuitive in terms of, like, I have a bunch of buttons here right now. These are mostly things that you could not have buttons for, basically. Like, extrude polygon mode doesn't need to be a mode. You could just let me select a polygon and then alt-dragging to clone the face extrudes it, uh, which is how Source 2 does it. Draw vertices is weird because I would expect to go point to point on something like this so I don't make like a bazillion verts like I'm doing. But it's a cool tool and it's only early on. Like look at that, that's pretty cool. See I can probably just extrude this now, right? Ah. Okay, it added a face that I don't want. Can I just delete that? Oh, okay, it's... ah! Now it's drifting? I didn't do that. All right. Whatever. One thing I've forgotten to check out so far is texturing, so let's let's find a material here. So I've hit assign material. My UVs seem okay. Um, but this is one aspect where I'm expecting them to have not done very well, um, at least yet. I mean, I can drag a material onto a face or a whole mesh. But can I change the texture alignment or anything? Probably not. Doesn't look like it. If you can, I can't see a way. So there's obviously a lot of work to do on this thing. Alright, well I guess I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. The system is pretty exciting, and I think it's going to be good. But it isn't yet. Uh, nor should you expect it to be, since it's not even in a public preview build other than on GitHub. But yeah, if it gets uh, texturing down and cloning down and uh, you know smooths out the interface a lot, maybe looks to the Source 2 hammer for inspiration. I have a video on that already then I think it's probably going to be good. It has a lot of the same features as Source 2's hammer, but Source 2 has so far uh, implemented them a lot better for the most part. Alright, laters.